Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and I wish you all the best for the new year ahead. Today we're going to be going over a Live Edge marble game that I was able to laser engrave and hand route for a very wonderful couple that purchase a homemade game every year to be able to play with their grandkids. So I have some live edge that I've been drying out in my attic. And as you can see, all the edges are kept sealed and this will help your live edge from cracking. So that was the piece on the top that I took for my marble game. So I'm going to have to make sure I seal that edge so it doesn't crack while it's still drying out. To prepare my live edge for engraving, I used my orbital sander and I started actually with a 40 grit sandpaper then a 50 to a 60 to an 80 to a 120, then a 220 and a 320. And I think I finally finished it off about a 400 grit. Um, made the wood just beautiful. So the next stage was actually designing the game. And uh, the couple that commissioned me uh, to make the game had actually sent me a photo of what they had in mind. So I was able to import the photo and then I started designing it. So if I just show you with the outlines, I started with the basic square and then actually started my outlines. And as you can see, when you do the inner lines as well, you can line up your circles to it. Now I'm just going to uh, slide over some guidelines here to show you the easiest way to do it is I design it in quarters and then I'm able to take all those circles that I just made I select those and I'm going to duplicate those and then I'm going to mirror and re rotate sorry, horizontally and then I can just slide those over and line them up to where I want them to be. I could duplicate those again. I could mirror vertically or I could have taken the whole half section, duplicated it and moved it to where I wanted. Now I did some test engraves to find out the size that I wanted for the marbles. Now I can't remember offhand these, the millimeter size that I went with, um, but when I started routing them, I did end up using a half inch round over bit for the marbles. So you'll see that in a little bit. So this is the grayscale design that I decided I would engrave first. And uh, then my secondary engrave, this is what I'm going to actually outline by using the vectorize tool in Laser Gerbil. And my last and final one is actually the marble holes and the inner circle, of course, which I wanted deeper. So what I did in order to make sure that all these files that I will be exporting as PNGs are the same was I would just duplicate each one and then I would put a white bounding box around them all and I would just delete what I needed to take out or change it to the grayscale. So we're just going to open up the game here and you'll see I have a number of files. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is the game board one and I'm going to have the smooth on. I'm going to take that to line to line tracing. I turn off my black and white because I want grayscale. And for my setting, I found that brightness 111, the contrast at about 88, and I slid down the white clip to about 25, gave me the grayscale that I wanted. So again, I've got that on line to line. The direction I'm going to engrave today is horizontal, and I went seven lines per millimeter. So I'm just gonna click on next. Okay, so the engraving speed that I'm going to go at I'm going to change that here to 3500 millimeters per minute. Now constant power you only use for cutting, so I've switched that to dynamic power. I'm going to take my minim minimum, I'll put a 50 in there, that changes it to 5%. And my maximum, I'm going to put in a 900, that puts it to 90%. I'm going to auto size it because it's designed to the size that I want. And I'll click create. And we'll just let the computer here. So you'll see that my first engraving here of the marble board will be two hours and six minutes. 
And of course, I'm just going to show you here, here with the sliders. When you start to engrave, um, I wanted a very light gray at the very beginning. So as I start to engrave, I can either change the, the power, the linear, or the rapid. And sometimes I, I'll take the rapid down to half speed because I'll get a very smooth engraving that way with the line to line tracing. So I'm just going to reset these to the defaults. But uh, again, if you're finding it too dark or too light, you can take down your linear speed. And uh, if it's too light or too dark, you can up or lower your power. Now, I don't suggest doing that when you're halfway through the engraving. Um, I had decided it was a, a little light for my first engraving um, that I did for the first run. So I let it run through the whole thing because if you decide to change your power halfway through, you're going to have different heights from the engraving itself. And uh, then you've got to play with the next engraving um, of your speed and your power in order to catch up to those lines that you accidentally changed your settings with. So I'm just going to show you the second. Um, I actually did two passes with the very first file that I just opened up. And uh, my second pass that I'm going to go in, and this isn't actually the file that I vectorized, but I'm just going to show you that um, I vectorized it, turned it to black and white, turned off the adaptive quality and the optimized travel to no filling. Because I just wanted to show you the settings that I used for outlining it. Uh, I, uh, now that's normally my cut speed is the 200 or, or at constant power but I'm going to change the border speed to 600 millimeters per minute. And I've got the dynamic power, which I'll keep there. And just for an outlining, I'm going to put that to 60%. I'm not gonna change the size at all because then this will outline exactly where I engraved because I haven't turned off the machine. I haven't moved my board at all. And uh, this is actually the file that I outlined because I wanted the arrows and the uh, start lettering to really pop. And then you'll see here, this is seriously my last layer that I did on the board um, was I wanted to make my marble holes deeper and the center where all the marbles are supposed to end up at the last, I wanted to make those deeper um, because right now I'm burning hardwood. So this is the beginning of my first pass. And this is a completion almost done of my first pass and like I said I did go over it again and then I did my outline and then I did my marble pass again and uh, I found it just wasn't deep enough now if you're engraving softwoods all the steps that I had taken probably would have been fine but I was dealing with hardwood so I decided I'm going to router it and I started out with just my Dremel tool and an engraving, which is a diamond bit, engraving bit. And I, I didn't like the circles the way they looked. So I brought out the big girl and I went in with my half inch uh, round over bit. And as you can see, uh, the marble holes look so much better that way. And I actually engraved out the sides so that they can roll the dice within the game board itself. So I used my Verithane uh, interior clear. And what I used was a small brush first to go inside the marble holes because I didn't want to fill it up too much with clear. And uh, then again, I used a fine brush. So I did about four to five coats of clear. And of course I always do the bottom first uh, because this way you're not scratching your top surface. So always do your top surface last when you're clearing it. Um, now I could have sanded a lot more into the grooves where I put where I wanted them to roll the dice but I really wanted a rustic look not to make it look like a brand new board and I think it turned out great. So I've got some uh, upcoming videos coming shortly of laser engraving mirrors, laser engraving some memory boxes and I'm going to show you how to make your own little accessories. We're going to go over laser engraving photographs as well. And the diode lasers do a beautiful job on the photographs. And of course, I'm going to uh, go over some uh, other things that I've made. It just was crazy busy at Christmas time. So definitely stay tuned for those videos coming. Now, I hope this video has helped and inspired you to go and create. 
please like and subscribe and you'll get notifications for upcoming videos. And again, thank you to all of you that have already subscribed. This Canadian gal really does appreciate you all. So thank you so much. Take care.